skip. You wired this organ at this joint. Okay? Do you agree? That's why it's important to keep the skin active and open so that you can freely discharge, right? Then what else besides skin? Breathing, right? Mm -hmm. right? Lungs, right? Carbon dioxide and other waste products are coming out. Okay? What else besides skin and besides breathing? Kidneys. Kidneys. Urination. So as we said, the kidneys are receiving a giant blood supply in order that they can filter, right? In order that they can discharge. Okay? Then what else? Menstruation. Menstruation. That not everybody has that. <laughs> Margin. The bowel movement, right? Okay. Margin. Now comes the difference between male and female, right? So what additional discharging pathways do women possess besides this? Breast. The breast. Before that. And menstruation. Menstruation, right? Okay. Monthly menstruation. Okay. Then what else? That's right, childbirth. So that's a very cute discharge, right? But that's your discharge, right? Baby, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then what else? Breast milk. Breastfeeding, right? Okay. Okay, so women are actually more efficient at discharging than men. Plus, comparing the two, male and female, who's taking in more and who's taking in less? Well, woman is on average smaller than men, right? Okay. Correct? So roughly a thousand calories less per day. Did you know that? So what's that add up to? Less taking in, more efficient. Discharging equals what? On average, what? Woman is more longevity or less longevity? More. Average seven to ten years longer lifespan than men, right? And by the way, on the in the world today, do you know who is the what demographic has the best lifespan on the planet? Do you know? Japanese women. Did you know? Because their diet is more plant-based, isn't it? They include foods like tofu, which have protective effects. And in general, they're eating less animal food compared to like American women. Okay? All right? Now, okay, this is an ideal scenario. But the thing here is that mostly we can't maintain this perfectly. So in today's world, especially our modern civilization of abundance, right? Which of these becomes the greater? Intake becomes much more, okay? Out of balance. So what does that facilitate? This we call, by the way, normal discharge. Normal discharge. You can also add your activity, daily activity, into that as well, right? That's why exercise is good to help you discharge, right? But as I said, that often is not enough. Our intake exceeds that. So what starts to happen now? And we've all experienced this. Right? Mm -hmm. Abnormal discharge, right? In other words, adjustment sickness, right? 
thickness of adjustment. So what are some examples? Abnormal discharges. Such as what? And he also planned. Yeah, so like sneezing, right? Watery eyes, right? Ear mucus or ear wax, right, isn't it? What else? <coughs> Coughing, right, isn't it? Coughing. What else? Pimples. Well, that'd be normal, actually, wouldn't it? Skin discharge. Yeah. Right, skin disease, right? By pimples, right? Skin markings, etc. Right, okay. So, for example, warts. If you have warts, what are you discharging? Protein. More eam protein. Like milk, especially. Wart. Wart. Skin wart. If you have a mole, what are you discharging? More heavy animal food, right? Okay, more yam. Okay. If you have freckles, what are you discharging? Sugar. Sugar. Okay. Also, like body hair is also discharged, right? Like pimples, would that be both sugar and heavy animal food, or? Depends on what kind, like acne, right? Acne is mostly what? I think you said it was just testosterone, so that would be heavy animal food. Heavy animal food, meat and dairy food. Meat and dairy food. Yeah, okay. So funny hair. Some oily type skin, oily pimples. This is more oil, right? Pimples can also be sugar too, right? Yes, please. Body hair. Say a bit more about that for me, abnormal discharge. Yeah, body hair, right? Yeah. So like, for example, if a woman eats a lot of meat, mm -hmm. what may happen on her face? Hair. Okay. Mustache comes, right? Mm -hmm. Because of what? She's producing too much what? Male hormone, right? Isn't it? What about things like just the hormones? I mean, I mean, so in balance, would we have body hair? Sorry? So, in balance, would we have body hair? I mean, think about In theory, no. In theory, no. Yeah, in theory, no. Except the... the and, and eyebrows and... Yeah, yeah, except yeah, the... Okay, but we'd have no black hair, no... That's right. Arm hair? In theory. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's kind of scary, though. Right? Men would still have, right? Would still have a beard. Okay. And between the genders, men would tend to have more, right? Okay. Right. But anyway, this is discharge. What is hair? What kind of discharge? What are you discharging? Protein. Hair is protein, right? And white or silvery type hair, what kind of protein is that that you discharge? Silvery white hair, like baby hair. Can you imagine? Like old hair or like baby hair? Like oh, baby hair, right? Yeah. What is it that you're discharging? Yeah. Obviously what? Milk. Baby fruit. Yeah. Dairy fruit. Milk. Milk and other dairy fruit. Mm -hmm. Whereas darker hair tends to be more animal. Okay, animal. Even on the head? Because some of it is like gray hair, white hair, is that true? Gray hair is the caused by constriction, constriction of the pigment cells. Mm -hmm. And usually the cause is too much salt or too much animal food. Okay. So should, should we get like, should our hair color actually change with age? To, to a degree it could, yeah. Okay. All right. What about hair care being mostly on the What was it that smell? Yeah, odor, More bad body odor. odor, okay, yeah. Then also from the kidneys, what kind of abnormal discharge is common? Stones, kidney stones. Before that, that's a step beyond discharge. Okay. The frequent urination, like having to get up three or four times a night, right? That's too much fluid, right? Discharge. How about through the intestine, what kind of discharge? Through the colon, what kind of abnormal discharge? Diarrhea, Diarrhea correct. So you may, right, go home for Thanksgiving, and you may enjoy the turkey and all the other foods with your family, right? But what may happen? Next day you may do what? You may have diarrhea. 
or you may have a sudden fever, right? Fever is also a form of distress. Now, how do we, in macrobiotics, how do we address these abnormal discharges? What is our approach to this? Suppose fever. What are we trying to do? And may I see that book, please? The, yeah. Quite encouraging. Yeah, I don't just let it happen. What's that? And let it happen. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Yeah, this book is all about how to approach that. Macrobiotic Home Remedies, very classic book, which I recommend very highly. Okay. Do you all have it? Yeah, please have. This should be your standard textbook. And our approach to fever, for example, is to allow the discharge to happen. Ease the symptom, but allow the discharge to take place. Don't suppress the discharge. So as we've studied for a fever, what do we use? Tofu on the forehead to let the fever come through, right? The heat come out. Tofu is a very effective uh, remedy for fever. Okay? How about diarrhea? What do we do for that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We try to make this more firm. So like kuzu, right? Salty kuzu. Or warm salt pack on the abdomen. So normal bowel movement can resume, okay? All right. But in some cases, right, this intake is even greater than these abnormal methods of discharge. It exceeds that capacity. So what happens now? What step is next? We can't get everything out. starts to accumulate, right? Accumulation comes next. And interestingly, these areas of accumulation of mucus and fat, for example, right? How can you characterize these? Do you know where this occurs first? Areas that do what? That are less important for survival? Not quite. Areas that have access to the outside versus deep inside, right? Can you imagine? So very common in the head, where? Very common area of accumulation. Sinus. Sinus, right, isn't it? Inner ear also, okay? So many, many people have blockage in the sinus, right? Even stones in the sinus, right? Isn't it? Periodically that becomes infected. Sinus infection. Or what's happening to the ears? This accumulation does what eventually? Causes what? Interferes with that very delicate mechanism, right? It's hearing mechanism. So hearing loss starts to happen because excess accumulates mucus and fat. Okay? Isn't it? But where else accumulation? Lung. lung, right? Lung mucus, chronic inflammation also in the lung, right? So like COPD has now become very, very common. Okay. Where else in the female body? Breast. Breast accumulation, isn't it? Okay. So like fibrocystic breast. So you have two types of fibrocystic breast. One is more soft, the other is harder. Softer cysts are caused by what? Milk. Milk, sugar, right, isn't it? Harder accumulations, harder cysts are caused more by hard cheese, right? Other types of harder animal food also. Then where else in the body does this accumulation take place? All the um, kidney. Kidney, right? So that brings us to the beginning of what process? Formation of what? Helen mentioned stone. kidney stuff, right? Okay. Or periodically, like infection in the urinary tract, isn't it? Bladder infection. 
the in men what other kind of infection? Like prostate infection, isn't it? Okay, related to that. All right. And then also in the intestine, accumulation, fat and mucus begins to form. Okay, interfering with smooth and regular elimination. Okay. Is this blood odor? Like saying some of it's going up, some of it's going down. Right. Okay. So some people won't have anything from the going up. Okay. They will just get something down there, or it depends on by odor you will get something. Depending on the combination of foods. And Ladies, sometimes this, upper, right? But also lower, what kind of accumulation? Fibroids. Fat, mucus, okay? okay? Which can lead to fibroids, which can lead to inflammation, can lead to condition like endometriosis, right? Things that we studied previously, okay? Is a prostate infection the same as an enlarged prostate, or is that something different? Different. Okay. Okay. All right. Then next. Even this is not enough to handle the excess coming in, right? So what comes next after accumulation, right? Isn't it? The whole purpose of this accumulation is to hopefully discharge as much as that of that excess as you can, right? Isn't it? That's why these regions. But if you go far beyond that, then what, what happens? The excess now starts to reverse direction and go where? Deep, right? Deep storage. Okay. okay. So very common if you eat a lot of high cholesterol, high fat animal food, where does that storage occur? Where? Deep inside. I was going to say non-essential organs. A non-primary organ. No, no, it goes deep. So, like arteries, right? Okay. Isn't it? Arteries become blocked. Okay. Plaque. Okay. Including the arteries supplying the heart. Okay. So-called atherosclerosis, which we studied already. Where else does the storage go? Suppose gallbladder. Like what happens? Calcium. Too much calcium, right? Too much cholesterol. We call that gallstone, right? Deep. Also kidney stone, right? Deep. Okay. I thought you said kidney stones were in They're in between stage three and four. The beginning of their formation is stage three. Stage four is the actual formation. Okay? Isn't it? How about liver? Remember we studied fatty liver? Fat actually accumulates in the liver, right? Okay. Isn't it? How about in the female reproductive tract? Fibroid, right? Isn't it? Ovarian cyst, 